God's got a plan and we're in it. You hope. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is a special day. You know why? Because it's a new one. Amen. It's a brand new day. Check it out. Yesterday's gone. You can't change yesterday, but you can change tomorrow. But what you do today. So what you did yesterday is waiting for you today. Oh, yeah. God says something very powerful. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? Can you imagine a father watching his own children being destroyed because they're ignorant, because they're not obeying, because they're not submitting, because they're not following? Stubborn hearts, stubborn minds, rebellious. And the word says, submit to God, then you can resist the devil. We are in such a time and season right now that the enemy is attacking everything because he knows his days are short. He knows he's going to do everything he can because he doesn't want to wait for the body of Christ to be removed. He wants to destroy much of the body before it is removed. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Where there's a beginning, there's always a end. Amen. And Matthew 24. Hallelujah. Matthew 24. In verse 3, this is the message of the Lord for us today. It's called end results. End results. Never fall in a place of lukewarmness. Never fall in a place where you think you know it. Never. Everywhere you go, learn, 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 learn. Never stop. Everything we learn, God expects us to teach. If, you're not, if your heart isn't in that condition, then it's in a wrong condition. Sound 20, or Matthew 24, verse 3. Let's speak it. Now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, let us, tell us when all these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed. Everyone say, take heed. In other words, have an ear to hear. Amen. That no one deceives you. So that means we got to discern what we're hearing. For many will come in my name. In other words, Christians. I'm a Christian. And saying that I am a Christ or a Christian. And will deceive many. Because the word believe means to follow. If you're not a follower, you're not a believer. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Is that happening now? Yeah. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. These are ethnic groups. Amen? Amen. These are nations that will rise against nations. In other words, they will promote prejudice, bigotry. They will promote their belief system and try and force it on others. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines. Are there famines? Is there pestilence? Are there earthquakes? There are other volcanoes. Yeah, and they're erupting in multiple places right now. And these, all these are the beginning of sorrows. But there's going to be a level and climax where they're going to begin to escalate. 
It says, and they will deliver you up to tribulation and they will attempt to kill you. That's happening right now. There are Christians that are being executed right now, beheaded globally. But the main me mainstream media will never let you know because they're promoters of it. Remember, the mainstream media is anti-Christ. Is everybody okay? And you will be hated by all other nations, all other belief systems for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and many will walk away from the truth. They will betray one another and they will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise, another false prophets, teachers, and religions, and will deceive many. And because of lawlessness, will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures, everyone say endures, endures. to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So we see something powerful here. We are looking at something that's called an end result. <laughs> he said, but in between this, you're going to see deception, false Christians, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, some tsunamis, volcanoes, globally. You will see attempt to attack Christians and kill to destroy, to steal. They will come, come, come in against to try to change the identity of individuals. Some people don't even know whether they're a boy or a girl. They will change identity. They will interfere with your purpose and call. They will ch bring false doctrines in. They've come to destroy the life of every Christian and the message of salvation. It is escalating right now like it's never been. We are watching the Babylon Empire with the harlot that drinks the blood of the unborn manifesting. It's happening in our time right now. Amen? Amen? The attempt to attack Christians and so forth is going to continue. Doctrines of perverse demonic influence will increase. Many will fall from the faith to save their own life. Betrayal of their country, their nation, and the eternal country, kingdom. Humanity. Fleshly restraints will become loose. And the love of many will be removed with lust and sin. We must endure and overcome to keep the message of escape to those who've been taken captive. And the only message, that's what the message of the gospel is. It is to bring an escape to those who've been taken captive. Because the only way out is Christ Jesus. Amen? That's the end result, isn't it? The only way out is Christ and Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Oh, happy days. Hallelujah. Oh. Revelation 20, is everybody there? Amen. May sound like I'm in a helicopter, but I'm cool. <laughs> Glory. In verse 11. Revelation 20, verse 11. Let's speak it. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was... There was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is called the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. That's called hell. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is an end result. If your name is not in the book, you're cooked. Revelation 3. That's, we ought to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Praise God. That turned some heads. Revelation 3, verse 1. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, the end result, no name in the book. You're roasted. Verse 1. And to the angel of the church of Sardius write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, and I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I have come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardius, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Wow. Wow. He who overcomes, everyone say overcomes, overcomes, shall be clothed in white garments, and I will what? Not blot. I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Because Can your name get blotted out? Yes. That blows the theology of once saved, always saved, huh? Amen. Show that to them, huh? Of course, they'll try and say they were never saved from the beginning, but anyways. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Verse 6. He who has an ear, let him what? Hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is a warning. He's telling us, look it. If you're not willing to overcome, your name will get blotted out. And you will end up separated from God. He who overcomes, their name will not get blotted out of the book of life. See, I personally believe everybody's name is in the book of life when you come into this realm. Does everybody understand? That's why children go home when they die. That's why even the aborted ones go home. Because their name is already written in the book of life. God knows because they were with him before he, they came. But then God gives a a time, an opportune time, an appointed time where he says there's a certain limit. He says now it's time to turn. If you're not willing to turn, then you will pay the price. There's an age of accountability. And it might be different to individuals. But there are no children in hell. Psalm 9, that's an end result. Praise God. In verse 13, You know, we have a saying in this ministry, learn or burn. Yeah. 
If you're not willing to learn, you're going to burn. The enemy will burn you. You'll allow somebody else to burn you. Or you can eternally burn. Verse 13. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. You who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell of your praise. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made. In the net which they hid, their own foot is caught. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into what? Hell. And all nations that do what? Forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, and do, let, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Then put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Hmm. The wicked will go to hell, and every nation that forgets Jesus, the name that is hated by evil. That name is hated by evil. Second Peter chapter 2. End results. Now, one of the things I want to explain about end results. An end result is getting in position where God has the last say. Has everybody got this? An end result is getting yourself in position where God has the last say. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people say God's got the last say. Well, you know why he doesn't have the last say? Because they're not in position. Oh, hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. Praise God. Is everybody okay? Second Peter chapter two verse one. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. But there were also what? False prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on them swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be what? Blasphemy. Is that happening now? Yeah. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to where? Hell. And deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved Noah and one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood of the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. Are there many who are oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked? I'm telling you, if you're not, and I'm not saying oppression by the enemy, but disgusted by what is going on right now. These are a time of Lot and Noah. We are in that time right now. We must be disgusted about these things that our government and other countries are promoting and doing. But we got to be praying against it. Amen? For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to what? Deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Why? Because they're positioned. Does everybody got that? They're allowing God to have the last say. That's the end result. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, 
and despise authorities. They are presumptuous, self-willed, and they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Where angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. So we see that there'll be false prophets, teachers, politicians, religious leaders. We are in a time of lot. To those who practice righteousness, you will be like you're in a time of lot. He will make a way of escape to those that are positioned. In other words, we must be positioned to allow God to have the last say. That is the end result. The end result is allowing God to have the last say. Does everybody understand that? Oh, hallelujah. Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6, 7. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Do not be what? Do not be what? Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. That's the end result, isn't it? For he sows to his flesh will reap corruption. That's an end result. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. Wow. It's an end result. It's a law called sowing and reaping. You can either reap life or corruption. Amen? But if you're sowing in the Spirit, are you being positioned and allowing God to make the Allow him to make the what? Last say. Yes. And Luke 14. Again, for some people, it will, the end result will be life. To, uh, and for some, it will be corruption and destruction. Because they use the, choose to live for themselves. Luke 14. We have a teaching called seeing it through. Every decision has an end result. Amen? Everything you and I do has an end result. It's like stepping in a puddle where there's a ripple effect to an end result. In verse 25. Now great multitudes went with Jesus. Is everybody there? And he turned and said to them all, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's an end result. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. In other words, who does not fight for me. We are fighting for God and his presence. We are fighting for his will and his purpose, not ours anymore. People spend more time defending themselves than they do the truth. And what that does is it causes a person to come into false fulfillments. If Jesus is not your fulfillment, you are out of order. Your children, your spouse, they are not your fulfillments. They are blessings. Only God is your fulfillment. When you try to get somebody else to be your fulfillment, You'll have offense. You'll have confusion. You'll have bitterness. You'll have unforgiveness. You'll want to blame everybody else when it's you that has lost the fulfillment of him. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost? whether he has enough to finish it. Thus, after he has laid the foundation, he is not able to finish. All who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. 
or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all. All. See, I don't think people really get this sometimes. Who does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. There's many who say I'm a disciple of Jesus, but they're really not. Because they still fight for their life. They fight for their will. They fight for their desires. They fight for them. They can't receive counsel. They'll do everything they can to get their desire fulfilled because Jesus is not their fulfillment. It may look good first, but I'm telling you, those demons know, and they're just waiting. You know why? Because the hook is still in the jaw. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Does everybody get that? That is an end result. The end result is a disciple of Christ or a disciple of the devil. John 10. See, this is where individuals take the word of God but don't mix it with faith. So they say, oh, that's not for me. That's just... That's not me. That's not for me. That must be for the person sitting next to me. Not realizing that the Holy Spirit is trying to bring conviction to turn. Every one of us should receive and look for conviction. If you're not looking for conviction, then you're out of order. And you're out of position. Because if you think you're okay, then you know you're not. Amen. Verse 9. Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the howling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Because the howling is only after money. Amen. See, Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. The end result is life abundantly or destruction. Does everybody get it? Now, life abundantly here on earth and life abundantly eternally. See, if you know your end result, praise God. Our end result should be home. <laughs> Not this home. This home. But see, people are so caught up in this home. They're so caught up in building the home that they lose sight of building the treasures. Oh, snap. Sec, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. The enemy likes to get us in a place where our priorities have been shifted. They're called shifted priorities. 2 Timothy chapter 2. You know, he's sly. How many of y'all know all things happen in this earth? Amen? Things happen. 
But you got to remember something. When bad things happen, it's because the enemy is getting access to steal, kill, and destroy. God came to bring life abundantly. The word says that we go astray. When we go astray from the word of God, we get afflicted. It's not God that's afflicting us. It's the enemy that's waiting for an open door. Amen? So we bring a lot of things on ourselves and don't even realize it. 2 Timothy 2.20. Uh, 21. Let's go to 21. Ah, uh, 20. Can I hear 20? Okay. Let's speak it. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. How many of y'all want to be a vessel of honor? Praise God. Well, I hope y'all would. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from his old conduct. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work and result. What do you have to do? You got to kill yourself. So just get your shovel and bury the old man and enjoy it. He says, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. So be careful who you associate with. And avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate what? Strife or what they generate is open doors. And a, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Does everybody get that? I might see a lot of people say, I'm a servant of Jesus, you, you, and you. What? You ain't no servant of Jesus. You're a servant of yourself. And that huge demon that's behind you is influencing you. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Don't get sucked in the ring. Keep your mouth shut. Only edification and exaltation. Amen? But be gentle to all. Able to teach. So you should be able to teach. You should be able to teach what you're learning today. Patient, which means endurance. And humility, humbleness. Correcting those who are in opposition. Listen, if you haven't met this qualification, you got no right to correct nobody. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their what? Senses and escape. That means you got to be positioned. The snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. So the end result is allowing God to have the last say. Hello? And it's going to take something. It's going to take cooperation in a fight. If you're not a fighter and you're not willing to cooperate, and I'm not saying fight every human being, I'm saying fight the de demonic forces. <laughs> Quit trying to tell everybody else what to do. Get the spirits out and you'll be fine. Hallelujah. It's going to take cooperation in a fight. Amen? We want to be vessels of honor. That's the end result. Honor or dishonor? 1 Timothy 4. And result is allowing God to have the last say. But you got to be positioned. You got to be willing to cooperate. You got to be willing to fight. In verse 6, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward what? Godliness. For, God, for bodily exercise profits a little, 
but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of acceptance. To this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. These things command and what? Teach. Oh, snap. Let's go a little further. Let one does, no one despise you, your youth, but be an example to the believers in word and conduct and love and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attention to the reading, of, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourselves and to the doctrine. Continue. Everyone say continue. continue. That means we must be consistent in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you and results. And results, allowing God to have the last say. Without cooperation and fight, there's no escape, there's no victory, and there's no heaven. Amen. James 1. Is everybody okay? End results. What's the end result? Is allowing God to have the what? Last say. But it's going to take positioning. It's going to take cooperation. And it's going to take a fight. Because the only way to get in position is to fight. James chapter 1, verse 21. Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is what? Able to save your souls. But be doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. There's a lot of people that nod their head, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, and don't do nothing. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing the natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and does what? Continues in it. And it's not a forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the word and of the work. This one will be blessed in whatever he what? He does. Why? Because he's allowing God to have the what? Last say. If anyone you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue... But deceives his own heart, this religion's useless. Remember, the only thing that can contaminate your spirit is your own tongue. The enemy's got not, no access to you in your spirit. But he has access to you by influencing you for you to speak and curse your own self. Is everybody okay? Doers and hearers will be blessed. That's why he says, keep oneself. Keep yourself. Let's go a little further. Verse 27, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. Hallelujah. Again, doers and hearers will be blessed and those who keep themselves from under the blood of Christ Jesus will be blessed and prosperous. It's an end result. 2 Corinthians 6. Then one more scripture, God willing. Second Corinthians six. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I've been hearing this a lot. The Lord has the last say. In fact, I say it a lot myself, but the Lord has the last say in this. The Holy Spirit brought to me today. He says, you know what? The only way I'm going to have the last say is if my people are in position. Many times they try 
to get me to say that I'm, I, I've got the last say, but they're not allowing me to have the last say. The enemy's having the last say. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell with them. I will walk with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people if they do something important. That's what therefore means. If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, I will be, uh, then I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's powerful. He says, come out from among the Babylonian Roman religious system, and then you will be sons and daughters of the Most High. That's the end result. Amen? Now listen, there's so many things that are going on, it's incredible. You know, we are living in such a time right now. I don't know if you know this or not, but you know, coming out from everything, that in, in, um, in Texas right now, they are trying to transgest, tra transgender bill is to ban Christianity in Texas. It's up. It's a transgender bill. It's a demon bill. To ban Christianity in the state. It's up all right now. Come on, you saw what they did already in New York, and they're trying to do it in other states. They're trying to bring nine-month abortion. Where the baby comes out of the womb, they kill it. And put it back in the womb. Something like that, I don't know. Don't they put it back in the womb? No? All right, they kill it. So they pull it out of the womb and kill it. Can, can you imagine that? And this one doctor, I think the guy's a doctor. He's an ex-congress or a congressman, but he's a doctor, ex-doctor or something. He says, well, they'll comfort the baby. How do you comfort the baby? Sedate it. Poison it? I don't know. But it's pretty sick of what's going on. All of these things are sick. Amen? We've got a time right now where 20.4 billion connected devices of surveillance is being manifested. Talk about the mark of the beast. <laughs> we got, uh, right now there's the uh, summit of Russia, Iran, and Turkey, which is a part of the attack to Israel. Iran is increasing their missile system. And the general of Iran said, we must wipe Israel off the map. So these things are all published. It's just crazy. Oh, this week is the United Nations Interfaith uh, Harmony Week. So make sure you don't go to it. So, we got, I mean, I'm telling you, it's just crazy what's going on right now. These people have no idea that there's an end result of heaven and hell, of their choices. But God still is merciful. And he's saying, please, somebody tell them. I sent them into the world. And they're now servants of darkness, but I want them to come out of darkness. Tell them. Amen? Hebrews 12. And we'll close here, I think. Or a couple more. We'll see. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hebrew. Hebrews 12. Praise God. Oh, 
happy days. Is everybody okay? End results. Hebrews 12, 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of the things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? A consuming fire. Wow. And results. I want to do one more scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1. That's why we're seeing all this shaking going on, man. It's a lot of shaking. In verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and result. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and results. Again, end results is allowing God to have the last say. It will take cooperation. It will take a fight and position. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed be protected by the blood of Christ. Let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. And prepare our hearts for communion in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.